What's good, my amazing friends? This is Sarah Grace. Welcome to The Remedy. I am Sarah Grace, your host of the show, The Remedy with Sarah Amazing Grace. And I am so grateful to be sitting here with you again another week. <laughs> you guys, I actually didn't think that I was going to do a show this week. Well, I did think I was going to do a show and I had a completely different show written out, ready to go, ready to roll. And <laughs> well, let me just say that this week has not gone the way that we had planned it to. Um, so anyway, this is not going to be a super polished show. I just wanted to quickly kind of jump in here and not leave you guys hanging with a, a show that uh, without a show, I should say. Okay, because uh, after a couple of weeks of doing demon slaying, um, you know, we've realized here in our household <laughs> that things have kind of, you know, something is afoot. It's going on. And, and I don't know if I, I do know we're being attacked. We're under attack. And we do have the authority over the enemy. But we know that even within that authority, things can still, um, they can try, you know, the fiery uh, arrows of the enemy still come, which is why we need to put on the armor. Having the authority doesn't mean that the fiery arrows don't come, right? It just means that we have the shield of faith. We know that it, with the faith that we have in God and in his um, sending of, you know, Yeshua to uh, us, that we have the ability to overcome, right? So we have the the shield, but ultimately we're still in this battle. And so anyway, this week, you guys, has been a battle. Last week, um, my husband and I embarked on um, kind of a very serious prayer time, reading the word, digging in, um, and fasting and um, really going kind of going, going deep, if the, you know, as the case may be. And okay, so I don't know. Anyway, um, after a few days of this, we started to notice that my husband wasn't feeling well. And um, <clears throat> so he he wasn't well. And um, uh, he started having some heart stuff. And you know, he'd had maybe something here or there in the past. He's a long distance runner, but this week things really started to come to a head. And a lot of people were praying for us and kind of knew that we were going through something like that. Okay. But, um, uh, what, what ended up, so anyway, we ended up like having to call the emergency doctor and, you know, hey, everything's okay. Just hang on, you know, and we've got appointments that are, coming, um, you know, for him to see doctors regarding this. But after about a week of this, things got really scary. Um, last Wednesday, um, oh, my husband was super, um, mellow, um, more mellow than he normally is, I would say almost to a point of de being depressed, which he never is. His skin pallor was like gray. And then he started having chest pains and, um, you know, a bunch of other symptoms in his body that were really, you know, I have a medical background and it was like, okay, <laughs> this is ER time. We don't mess around with this. And so we went to the ER and, um, you know, when you go to the ER and you have a broken bone or you know, you've got something going on. There's a criteria of what's called triage that they, that they do in, in the ER. And sometimes you can go in and, oh my gosh, I've been waiting here for three hours. They haven't taken me back yet. If they haven't taken you back. And even though it's an emergency to you, if they haven't taken you back yet, it's actually a good sign that you're not probably in imminent danger, <laughs> right? Okay. So they immediately took him back. There was no passing go. He literally went into the triage room. They hooked him up for a second and immediately took him into a room, immediately strapped him all full of stuff, chest x-rays and labs and uh, all the leads on and everything. I mean, they were like, this is bad. <laughs> What's going on with this dude is not good. And so, oh, you guys, um, I was kind of falling apart a little bit. You know, it's, 
it's listen <laughs> we're we're under we were under a spiritual attack for sure and anyway last week was rough as you maybe could have told by the way that i looked in the video last week was crazy remember we talked about the fact that i had to record the video three different times because the first time the video didn't record the second time the audio didn't record i mean and of course before you record you test everything and everything's working fine right but then it doesn't <laughs> so anyway we um we had all of that and so even last week we were kind of like a little bit beat up, you know, while I'm, while I'm filming and, you know, like, okay, we're in this war, this battle, ah. but then, you know, here we are, you know, this week and I'm getting ready to, uh, lay down the tracks and, uh, you know, whole world or what we were thinking was coming apart. Right. And anyway, it's, I don't tell you that we were doing all of that for accolades by any means like, oh, she's so spiritual. They were fasting and this sparked off this thing. No, I'm telling you the truth of what happened to us in our week. And listen, you guys always know that I'm going to keep a 100 for you, right? I mean, I, like, I don't always need to have my hair done and makeup done. And listen, if you're looking for like the, the girl with the Beth Moore perfect, you know, quaffed, blonde football helmet kind of hair you know no hate on any of that if you love the blonde football helmet more power to you <laughs> but anyway there are other ministries who will fill that need for you i am tattooed and i am a spiritual gangsta i am i am you know that chick who listens to you know gangster rap on her way to trader joe's and um <laughs> anyway that is just who i am right and and those who know me know that i keep it legit right and sometimes i am a mess sometimes my hair is in a bun and i'm just wrecked and <sighs> it's just nothing but real life over here you guys and anyway we were fasting and praying and um we had planned to do this for for 40 days and that you know, God had other plans. He had other plans to teach us and, and shape us and mold us through this experience of going to the hospital where it was, it was really bad. Uh, what was, what was going on? And, you know, I'm sitting there going, okay, I'm in a new state and my family's really far away. And my husband is really, really sick. And, um, <clears throat> uh, it was scary. And, and I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say that, you know, uh, that I wasn't scared. There's a lot of people who might think, Oh, you know, Sarah, amazing grace, you know, amazing grace. She's got it all together. She's, you know, a Christian and she's got this show, the remedy, right? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I do. I have this show, the remedy, and I've been studying the Bible and for many, many years, and I am a believer and you know what? I'm real. <laughs> I'm a real, real girl. And I'm in this battle too. And sometimes I get scared. You know, we've talked about that song, you know, they don't know that I go running home when I fall down. They don't know who picks me up when no one is around. I drop my sword and cry for just a while, right? Because deep inside this armor, the warrior is a child. Do you guys remember that song from the 80s? Maybe you weren't even born yet. But anyway, that song, The Warrior is a Child, that that is me. I'm being real that I struggle too with having the faith that you need to not, you know, freak out, you know, when your husband is in the middle of what seems like a heart attack. Anyway, and and for me, I've I have survived a lot in my life, which has led me with a little bit of post-traumatic stress disorder, right? So anyway, I'm always in my mind preparing for whatever the worst case scenario is. <laughs> anyway, my survival techniques, I guess. And so what any, anyway, my face was, my faith was a little less than optimal. You know what I mean? Anyway, so back at the hospital, here we are, they've got Eric hooked up to everything and his heart is going crazy, wild beats and, you know, <sighs> instead of Eric's like luscious brown coloring, he is like gray as a sheet and the machines were alarming all over the place. And, um, 
his, you know, usually like optimal male blood pressure was through the roof and they were thinking heart attack, chest x-rays, blood work, the whole nine. And that's scary. <laughs> and um, so anyway, this is why the podcast is delayed this week, late this week. My husband was in the, the hospital um, and uh, praise God, it wasn't a heart attack. Um, they said, uh, actually, uh, all of your labs came back and your everything comes back and it's all normal. Um, and uh, except for the fact that you're dehydrated. <laughs> and we're like, oh, well, we had been doing this fast. And um, well, yeah, maybe that's what it is. But somehow that dehydration just kicked off. But I mean, that's like the physical realm. But in that hospital room we were freaked and you know you guys <clears throat> i was like uh, i get to the hospital my phone only had 15 percent. that's a panic in in and of itself i'm going you know into the er where i know i'm going to be there for hours and i have no charger with me no charging block and it's like you know worst nightmare ever no i'm kidding anyway so uh my phone you know so it's like okay well i need to put out there for people to pray and of course you know i've texted family and i put out there and it's like i don't have the battery life to text everybody individually right it's got to be separate we gotta we gotta we gotta go so what do i do is i put it out there on facebook and on instagram and within moments hundreds, probably thousands of people praying all over the world, people in Africa, <laughs> hey, hey, you guys, posting, I mean, people in Australia, people, I mean, we're talking all around the globe, flat earth, the dome, pizza dome, whatever, <laughs> whatever rock that we are living on. Um, <laughs> everywhere, people were praying for Eric and for me in that room as we sat there, um, just the two of us not knowing what the future held. I was not going to cry on this, so apparently I failed on that. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. Thank you for going to war in the spiritual realm on our behalf. <clears throat> we were both kind of beat up, you guys. And um, you know that messenger from Satan sent to beat you up? Well, it seems that we have one of those too. <laughs> and, um, you know, those of you wondering if I'm some spiritual powerhouse that never worries, well, you ain't been listening to the remedy very long. <laughs> anyway, <sighs> anyway, I'm a real spiritual gangster kind of gal, but sometimes I'm, uh, just a little girl inside. Anyway, fam, I keep it real. So anyway, <laughs> I was scared. Eric was scared. <sighs> and being scared, that shouldn't stop you from doing what needs to get done. So in that room, things seem so out of control. As I said, like alarms are going off. And in our hospital room, it was like this, something's wrong. <laughs> you know, something's wrong. N not just physically, like something is wrong. So I broke out um, my book of deliverance <laughs> and on the believer's authority. And lo and behold, in the middle of this hospital room in Bernie, Texas, we are in alone together in this room and we are praying the believer's authority, prayers for authority over any evil that may possibly be uh, causing this, that is stopping me from recording the podcast that I had set out to record this week. Um, and uh, anyway, everything works together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose, right? So even sitting in that hotel room, even though I had planned and written out a whole other message, this is what the Lord wanted me to say is that in that hospital room with my husband's heart bouncing all over the place and not knowing what the day held that we needed to cry out to the Lord and we needed to take 
authority over the situation in the believer's authority, in, in, in the authority that Jesus gave that allows you to trample on scorpions and snakes and over all the evil of the enemy. And so we did. In the middle of all of this, we were speaking those words aloud. We were renouncing curses. We were shutting doors. And in that hotel hotel room, <laughs> certainly it's more expensive than any hotel room I've been in, in that hospital room, you guys, both Eric and I had goosebumps up one down side and up one side and down the other. It was absolutely incredible what happened in there. The Holy Spirit came into that room and filled that room. And while Eric's arrhythmia wasn't taken away, what was these crazy heartbeats that were going, you know, into the hundreds and then, you know, down deep low and up high and all over the place, they stopped. They stopped. And while the arrhythmia remained, the crazy all over the place, nausea, uh, chest pain that was, uh, you know, and, and that incredible fright that we were walking in completely disappeared. And we both knew that it was going to be okay. And Eric actually got a word from the Lord there. He heard the Lord's voice speak to him in his hospital bed that the Lord was going to take care of it all. And that that is it. That was the medicine that we needed. The enemy was thwarted. And while we were in the mash tent, <laughs> the, the Lord showed up because that's what he do <laughs> when two or more are gathered together in his name, he going to show up and he did. And so thank you to all of you who were storming heaven on our behalf. Eric was able to be released to go home. The tests all came back that, and, and, and how, if you would have seen the, the things that he was hooked up to and <clears throat> how he had no damage in his heart, they said, you have no cardiac damage whatsoever. And your heart isn't even being stressed. That was amazing. So anyway, do you know that there are over 600 times in the Bible that prayer is mentioned? Some say that there are over 650 different prayers in the Bible. And there are just countless times that that prayer is part of um you know, an overall picture. And it's because, you know what, prayer is, is what we are supposed to be doing. It's not only necessary, prayer is what we are supposed to be doing. Did you know that in Revelation chapter five, verse eight, it says, and when he took the scroll, the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. And each one had a harp and they had a gold bowl filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. <laughs> Our prayers are incense to the Lord. So much so, that, and they're so precious that they put them in bowls of gold. So I just want to thank you guys this week. The remedy is that if you are facing an insurmountable, what seems impossible, <laughs> if you're facing that, like we were in that hospital room, I want you to pray the prayer of the believer's authority. And if you don't know Jesus, Jesus is real. This isn't some fake sky daddy garbage. No, you guys, this, this, this is how you fight your battles. You may have heard that song. This is how I fight my battles. This is how 
right? This is how you fight your battles. It's on your knees praying to God. Your prayers are so precious that they are held in bowls of gold and they are as sweet as incense. And to us, knowing that there were hundreds and th maybe thousands of people in a moment. I mean, I posted that and in a moment we had 300 people commenting and then putting it out to their prayer chains. And I just, uh, I can't, I can't describe how amazing and beautiful it is to me. And then to know that there were bowls filled with the incense of you for us. So every week on this show, I say that I love you guys. And I just want to thank you so much because you showed love to me and to Eric. So thanks for hanging out. Thanks for making me cry. <laughs> And until next week, I love you guys. Peace.